Good, hello, welcome to Onion Skin. Today I want to have a proper look at just how the brushes work and just really deconstruct them and give you a good idea and what's kind of going on under the hood to power this engine. So over on the right hand side of the interface, if you hover your mouse here, an extra secret panel will pop up and press this button here with a little pin on it and it locks into place. It's a whole ton of extra brushes and at first glance you might just be thinking, oh okay, these are... These are the brushes, these are the tools that you have to use, but they are in fact simply examples. A bit of a demonstration, if you will, as to how powerful uh, the main brush feature is and you can do pretty much anything with it. They have all sorts of crazy looks of them, like hair and the interestingly 3D thing, or grass. Of course, much more standard looking drawing materials and others like this sponge, which will interact primarily with imagery that's already on the page, sort of mix it together in cool ways. Very, very cool stuff. So how does it work and how can you make your own? Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate with probably my favorite one, which is the flame brush. Look at this, oh, so cool, makes fire. And as you go back over itself, it gets brighter and it pushes things around and it sort of mixes with itself. And then, oh, isn't that neat? So how does this thing do? Down in tool properties, we can see some of the general setup here. Uh, first of all, it is comprised of two colors, red and yellow. So that makes sense. Theoretically, I could change this to a blue and a, a green and there you go. It's now got green edges with a blue core. Sort of creates a mix based upon them. If I go back over the original one now, oh, look at that. It all mixes together in all sorts of fun ways. Going back to the original colors though, I want to get this down to the absolute basic piece. Uh, first you'll see shift. Shift is the thing that is pushing the ink around. Uh, so I'll change that from 100% all the way down to zero. You'll notice a dramatically different look. It's not pushing anything around and it's got this very harsh texture to it. If I go back over it, it'll kind of lighten up as it did before. Uh, this texture is a paper. If you go to Windows, drawing, papers, a new panel will come up that has all these different paper textures to it. And this one here, have a look at that. It's, that's, that's the thing we're using. Uh, it has been inverted and everything is sort of just cranked up to 100% to give it a very harsh, you will only see these shapes mask. Uh, if I invert it, you'll get a look kind of like this, for example. I'll drop the hardness and get a look kind of like this. Oh, now it's starting to look like sort of cracked lava. But to deconstruct it, I want to turn the paper texture off completely. Up the top with all of these tools, you can see this page symbol here, and it is currently switched on. Press it once, it'll switch off, and we'll now draw this. Notice as I move the brush around the canvas, it's sort of flickering between all of these different states. And as I draw on the left-hand side until properties, it is flickering around between all sorts of different states. Uh, so what's going on there? Uh, we'll come back to it, but uh, this brush has tons of different samples inside of it. You can see there is actually a timeline here, and as I scroll through it, it selects between uh, different pictures inside this sample set, and it's set to loop through them as we draw. So first we've got a few different other settings going on. Jitter is at 21%. If I crank it all the way up just to so you can see what it's doing, it throws the samples either side of it like that. So with that on zero, it becomes a little bit barely noticeable, but you know, smoother. One of the other things causing it though is rotation. Uh, you can see an angle category here set to zero degrees. So is it rotating? Ah, yes it is. Rather than being an amount, uh, it has a setting. Notice it says R and the rest of them just say C. Uh, if you click on this setting here, you can see R is for random. So it's randomly choosing a rotation. And if I put it on constant, you can see that the texture itself is now very repetitive as it loops through the same images over and over again in the same order. Opacity is only on 7%. I'll crank that up to 100 and now see, it looks very solid on the stamp. And when we draw, ah! Different option that we went into here on angle, they are on all of these. So on opacity, for example, have a look at all these different settings and imagine how you could potentially use them. So speed, for example, it's going to control the opacity from how fast I draw. So moving slowly and as I speed up, it becomes more harsh. So that's pretty useful. But moving on, first I wanna stop this thing from sampling different stuff all the time. You can see it choosing one as I scroll through it. Uh, so rather than random and loop, 
I'm going to change it to none. Uh, but quickly look at some of the other ones. You can make it loop once, you can make it loop continuously, you can make it ping pong. Uh, random and loop what it was on before. It starts at a random point and then it will loop in order. Uh, so I'm going to leave it on none. I can still choose the sample I want. Uh, so a very smooth one here. I'm going to pace it out a little bit more. At the moment, step is on nothing. It says 12%, but notice this box is turned off. This one's a checkbox. Uh, so if I turn it on, you'll notice it's a little bit more staggered. Uh, if I'll increase it to about 50% or so, so we have a bit of spacing. Uh, now we can see we are now down to a very simple brush indeed. However, it is still overlapping. If I tap over it, you know, it's, it's, it's doing this stuff. It's still mixing to a, to a certain degree. It's not being a completely normal, you know, this is, this is the color, be this color. Uh, why is it doing that? This is Luma. Uh, under this category here, there is a whole bunch of different like mixing options. So Luma Invert, uh, for example, is going to kind of do the opposite. So rather than sampling from this darker swatch, it's doing it from the lighter one. Uh, and mess around with all this stuff. Does There's all sorts of different options. Uh, but if I turn it back to Origin, it will go back to the original color it was intended to be. And funnily enough, this brush was actually, each sample is uh, cycling through the rainbow. It's It's... Just like that, that's how the textures were made. So as I go around now, it will be uh, the color it started off, uh, but it is still mixing. And it's doing that because it's just a good old fashioned blending mode, particularly it's on add. Uh, you know, these, you see them everywhere. Add, subtract, multiply, screen, you know, these, I'll put it on color. And now all the mixing stuff is completely turned off and it is just a standard stamp of this exact texture here, no matter what. But just for fun, because all of these samples are rainbow, I'm going to put it back on loop. What's that going to look like? Ooh. Wait, hang on. Turn step off. And... <laughs> That's fun. I'm going to turn shift up and opacity back down. So it'll sort of start to push around again. Oh, that's pretty neat. So there you have it. Deconstructing a brush, getting it back down to its base set. Uh, will hopefully inspire you and give you some ideas on how this thing works. Remember, most every brush is just started from this selection tool up here. Um, you know, just sort of make a selection like this and it just becomes a basic stamp like that. Uh, and from there, mess with all those settings, mess with the colors and you, it, it's nuts, isn't it? Like that you could go from this to this by pulling the parameters around. So see what you can build back up. Remember, paper textures are a thing as well that perform all sorts of different results. There's so much to discover. Join me again soon. We've got other interface things to talk about, but also when we come back to the brush, uh, we're going to be doing it in order and, you know, starting with something from scratch and build it into something new. Uh, not only that, but building a whole new custom panel. Uh, so not only do you have these examples over here, but you can start with a blank panel and build it up with your own presets and have your own little library. Great for constructing your own personal workflow for whatever project you happen to have. So go have some fun. Bye.